Joining Jessica Russett from Fig Securities is joining us. Jessica, great to see you there today. Just talk us through what we are seeing in the bond market because it certainly does get, you know, we, we've seen these geopolitical risks easing. Um, how much is that flowing through to, to bonds right now? Hi Leanne, thanks for having me. That's right, so it seems that in the lead up to Easter we did see these geopolitical risks come through. Uh, we had a, a safe haven play and at the moment it seems to be more risk on at the moment and there's less of a demand for bonds at the moment. So we had uh, the outcome of the US election over the weekend or the, the referendum. There was also that failed North Korean missile as well and so there is very much these tensions are easing and we had US uh, Treasury bond yields higher. The 10-year was a basis point higher and that closed at 2.25 per cent. Um, and are we seeing Aussie yields following those US yields higher? Yeah, that's right. So they have also moved higher as well. So we had the uh, Aussie government five and ten year, two and three basis points higher, respectively. And we've got at the moment the five years is just over two percent and the ten years is just over two and a half percent at the moment. So they're coming off their lows for the month, which were uh, just pre-Easter. So once again, those geopolitical risk, it was safe haven just before Easter. And so now we're seeing that ease and they're moving higher as well. Well. Okay, excellent. Um, the RBA board meeting minutes, of course, they were in focus today. Um, how much has that played into to the market? Because obviously high household debt concerns, um, inflation, there's a whole paragraph sort of dedicated to, to their concerns around inflation. What was your view on those minutes and, and how did we see the, the market reacting? Yeah, sure. So there actually wasn't too, anything too surprising coming out of those minutes. There wasn't really that, that much different language uh, or use or rhetoric or anything along those lines. We have seen at the moment the Aussies come just a little bit. Uh, we also have iron ore though down at the moment that could be a re reaction to that as well. Um, but I think at the moment the RBA's hands are really quite tied with the housing at the moment, the overheating market in both Sydney and Melbourne. So really until that situation cools I, I think they're very much limited in what they can do in terms of rate cuts at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of uh, rate cuts. Well, of course, we talk about rate increases in, in the US and it seems like the probability of a, of a June Fed hike is decreasing. Seems like there's a few factors really working against US rate increases, not least of all clarity on, on Trump's tax reform. Yeah, that's right. So there seems to be some factors that are actually out of the Fed's hands that are working against them. The possibility of a June hike is down to 47% and that was from 60% over the month. And also in December as well, that's also the possibility of that down as well to 37% uh, as well from 56%. So just looking at that, we can see that the, the market's losing confidence that they're actually going to go ahead with these rate increases. And part of that is due to, as you mentioned as well the the belief and the clarity um, that Trump President Trump will be able to get these tax reforms and the infrastructure spending across the line uh, and also as well we've had some weak data recently out of the US as well uh, over the weekend we had really poor CPI uh, come in that was disappointing uh, and also the Fed has spoken about normalization of its balance sheet where it will be shrinking uh, its, its holdings and so as a result of that that's naturally going to see uh, yields increase um, because of the, the less demand for these bonds.